Antarctica fears. How the continent's ice melt threatens to flood New York under 20 feet of water. Well, it seems that it's too late to stop the ice melt of the Antarctica ice sheets. This is um, based on what we know so far and also here, Callum Hoare of Express UK. We know that Antarctica has over 100 volcanoes and a lot of them are active and uh, basically on the area of the west of the continent where we see the ice sheets melting and uh, cracking off. That's the area where the most active volcanoes have been found and also new volcanoes have been found under the ice sheets and they're active as well. So it could be that it's not only global warming which obviously has something to do with the melt but it's also the volcanic activity underneath the ice. Now we know that Antarctica, the southernmost continent, is covered in 98% of ice. It's the largest single mass on our planet. They say it weighs about 27 billion gigatons and it contains about 61% of all the fresh water on the earth. New research suggests that this area is thinning five times faster than in the 1990s. A lot of people believe it's climate change, but it could be also volcanic activity underneath, which means large chunks of the glaciers, in any event, are sliding into the ocean and they're melting. Or if we have melting underneath their foundations, Again, they're sliding off and melting. NASA has backed a study and it warns that uh, the findings warn that the icy continent reaches a tipping point and the effects are now past the point of no return. So the damage is done, but now scientists want to find ways to mitigate this. What can we do about lessening the damage. Robert Bell for, from the Lamont Doherty Earth Observatory stated in a NOVA documentary, quote, the secret of Antarctica, that's what it's, uh, end quote, that's what it's called, the future could hold. And um, Robin Bell warned back in 2015, most people don't think that changes in Antarctica affect them or matters to them. But when we look at New York City, for example, and we look at it as if from the front of the ocean, it matters. Antarctica is melting, and when it melts, the sea level goes up. If it, we say that uh, it all melts, it will go up 12 stories in New York City. It would raise the sea level in Manhattan by about 19 feet. Robert DeCondo, who is a climate modeler for the University of Massachusetts, has a theory that what could happen before the end of the century if humans do not act, he said, sea levels would rise more than 150 feet. That means that, obviously, most cities would be underwater. This would flood coastal cities, displacing hundreds of millions of people. That would be a change that you could see from space. Earth would look totally different. Big sections of Brooklyn would be underwater, and certainly cities in the Mediterranean Sea, like Venice, of course, would be very different. Unlike the Arctic, the Antarctic is a massive landmass that's covered in ice, formed from snowfall. And there is some floating ice around the perimeter of the land, but the vast majority of Antarctic ice is on the land mass. When ice melts, the liquid water flows into the ocean, causing the water levels to rise, of course. And the difference not only affects how these regions respond to climate change, but also impacts the importance. The global warming causing ice to melt, or in, in our case, perhaps even you know the volcanic activity. In any case, the ice is melting 
due to one reason or another or combination, and it concerns all of us. Over the last decade, people increased burning greenhouse gases to power a modern home, modern world. Certain gases, most notably carbon dioxide, trap heat in the Earth's atmosphere, causing something as we would call the greenhouse effect. Also, the fact that we have all these massive earthquakes and volcanic eruptions, which are on an uptick, as we see, also produce carbon dioxide. That's not good either, because it's just heat. It's, it's the way for the, the Earth to be uh, heating, like they heat the, the, the Earth like a furnace. But uh, if it's a, there's an uptick in it, obviously, we'll have more of a, of a heated atmosphere. Sunlight shines onto the Earth's surface where the energy is absorbed and then radiated back into the atmosphere as heat. The atmosphere greenhouse gas molecules trap some of this heat and the rest escape into space. The more greenhouse gases are concentrated in the atmosphere, the more heat gets locked up in the atmosphere. And former U.S. Vice President, as we know, Al Gore, revealed during his 2006 book, An Inconvenient Truth, the shocking warming sign that painted the sobering reality. He wrote, John Mercer was a scientist whose work I first saw when I was investigating global warming. As a member of Congress, he said in 1978, one of the warning signs that a dangerous warming trend is underway in Antarctica will be the breakup of the Antarctica Peninsula, starting with the north, northernmost and extending gradually southward. Uh, now, discussing the revelation of the ice shelf disappearing, he said, here is Antarctica Peninsula. Each orange splotch represents the ice sheet the size of Rhode Island or larger that's broken up since Mercer issued his warning. And the red splotch marked 2002 is the Larson B ice shelf also portrayed in the photograph illustrating the massive size of ice shelves rising roughly 700 feet above the ocean surface. Gore went on to discuss how this thick chunk of ice vanished in over a month, and he stunned the scientists. He said the Larson B ice shelf photographed below was about 150 miles long and 30 miles wide. When you look at the black pools on top of it, it seems that you're looking through ice to the ocean bottom. Actually, those are pools of melting water collecting on top of the ice shelf, and scientists thought this ice shelf would be stable for at least another century, even with global warming. But starting January 31st, 2002, with 31, the 35 days it completely broke up and scientists were absolutely astonished they couldn't figure out how in the world this happened so quickly. Now as you can see this is one of the undersea volcanoes uh, found in the north of Antarctica. As you can see here it's the area if you look at Google Earth that has sort of like the finger of God pushing on the Earth's crust from the west to the east, cutting South America and the tip of Antarctica. And there's a, 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 an arc of islands around there, volcanic islands. That's why sometimes when we see earthquakes just off of Antarctica, it could be perhaps there are underwater volcanoes. Also on the west, you have volcanoes under the, the ice sheet as well and on the west. So uh, we have a tremendous amount of volcanoes there, as we see. And uh, the various countries that are there are still searching. They're there for studies. Now, thermal anomalies were detected in all these images showing craters, suggesting that the lava lakes are under there. And it's a common and persistent feature. It is not, however, the first time scientists suspected the presence of magma lakes in Mount Michael. Mount Michael is an active stratovolcano on Saunders Island in the South Sandwich Islands. Those are the, those are the islands, an arc of islands that is just uh, between South America and Antarctica in that area that is depressed on the Earth's crust, as we said, like the finger of God going from west to east. Those are the Sandwich Islands and, of course, they're all volcanic islands. So, um, there's see, geologists and oceanographers 
are still finding out what's, what's under the sea. Now, the Ark of Islands contain only active volcanoes, but the area, uh, very little known about this, lava lakes themselves are incredibly rare phenomena. Until now, only seven were discovered in the whole world, and more being discovered, obviously, a new one. This is a lava lake there, and there are reservoirs of molten rock associated with active volcanoes and have been found in Ethiopia, Chile, Antarctica. In the 1990s, scientists observed persistent thermal anomalies that suggest that some form of unusual volcanic activity is underneath, of course, which is here in Antarctica. There have not been any observations at a resolution high enough to make concrete discoveries. The study reads, in situ observations of My Mount Michael are extremely difficult given the location, we use Landsat Sentinel-2 and Astro satellite data to monitor activity and detect thermal anomalies within the crater. Now, Antarctica Lava Lake sits in the eruptive zone of Mount Erebus, and that's the most active volcano on the icy continent of Antarctica. Obviously, we have a lot more to learn about Antarctica. In any event, the end result is that all this ice is melting. It's melting very fast, too fast, which means that we're going to have more storms because the stability of the Earth's weather will be affected because of this. Extreme winters, extremely hot summers, a lot of rainfall, a lot of waves, a lot of uh, cyclones, hurricanes, and of course the areas around the coasts and the banks of the rivers will be very much affected. I'll leave links below for you for this. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.